Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Speaker. And um, just to briefly provide support for this motion to guarantee $80 million from the First National Bank to the National, to the National Lotteries Authority to assist in financing youth and sports infrastructure program. I just need to, while I support, just bring to this House, Mr. Speaker, the importance of what is before us. And I will do so, Mr. Speaker, by trying to explain how this is arranged in terms of what obtains in government and how this administration is thinking. Mr. Speaker, I just wish to first establish that even before my time, that this administration is responsible for the establishment of NIPRO, the National Lottery Authority. No, NIPRO. NIPRO is one entity through NIC that was responsible for development. The National Lottery Authority, agencies like Bell Fund, the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, the National Conservation Authority, as special vehicles established towards the establishment of social interventions that ordinarily central government would not, would find it difficult to participate in. And it's just no to registering in the minds of our St. Lucians that these arrangements by this government, the structures, speaks to a broad, a broad understanding of procurement responsibilities, the arrangement of social goods and services, and who at best is able to advance and to promote them. So here in this important piece of legislation, here the National Lottery Authority is being featured. Mr. Speaker, of course, so often we speak of the GDP of our country, and of course it is the market value of all goods and services. And in St. Lucia, small island developing states, there are not many assets, but there are some significant ones that we can speak to. Our youth assets are significant. And it's important that we maintain them because they contribute to our, to the value, to the wealth of this country. We cannot allow them to depreciate. And Mr. Speaker, there are some of them that are, that are considered to be national in perspective because they're not constituency based. It doesn't belong to Grozily, for example. It's not a, the constituency of Grozily, nor the George Odlum Stadium is an asset to view for. These are national assets. They contribute to the well being of our entire society. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, when we consider establishing assets within communities, the issue of maintenance is also very important. Very important. Because at this time, we do have a vehicle in place to contribute to the maintenance of Darren Cricket, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds. But Mr. Speaker, I need to bring to your mind, and if you're not aware, that Assuming the responsibility as parliament, parliamentary representative for Castries Southeast, I encounter the largest community center ever built in St. Lucia. How many toilets? How many Come in, take your time. How many toilets? Largest. There is one in Odsat about $5 million. And I know that I'm currently establishing a community center, and I'll you full ask it, um, at this time for just under $1,800,000. But the one that was built, the one I inherited in Otsa, is, what, is about $5 million. How many toilets? Hold on. And I thought this was the largest one built in Castry Southwest. But Mr. Speaker, do you know there's one in Bexo, costing $10 million, with 21 toilets, six urinals, and six washrooms? How many? Electricity bill will cost the community five thousand dollars a month. Now, twenty-one. More, yes, yes. You could go there and count it. It's not a hospital. In fact, there's more toilets 
in this community center than there's toilets in the waterfront building, the Graham Louise building. <laughs> in fact, yes. Now, I made this point, I made this point in the context of wastage of resources as explained earlier on by the, the, the leader of opposition and the strategic use of resources. A government who plans and takes things into consideration. This community center is not for a region. It is not a national community center. It is a center for the community of Bexo. Only, Only Bexo. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you must visit it for yourself <laughs> to see the magnitude of a community center, the largest community center ever built in St. Lucia. And again, I need to say to St. Lucians, the total number of toilets in that community center at a cost of 10 million in the Bexor River, it has 21 toilets in it. Six urinals and six washrooms. And this year gave 26 reasons why it should be Of course, be and there was. I saw correspondence from this year giving 22 reasons why it was not approved, but it was subsequently approved because it's a World Bank project. Mr. Speaker, in the context of this debate, Beg your pardon? I, I, you see, I, I do not, um, I do not understand what you're saying. But, Mr. Speaker, we need to be careful, and we need to have an appreciation for what this government is doing, and understand the strategic development of this country. When this government conceptualized this, these major assets, and the importance of these assets to the development and the well-being of our population. And of course, today we can find the wherewithal to arrange for its maintenance, but not also to guarantee to maintain it, but also to ensure that the vehicle put in place to facilitate maintenance and its upkeep can also pay for it. That's what's important to me. And I ask myself the question, how will the Bexar community maintain a community center with 21 toilets? How will it maintain it? In fact, its location requires two security guards because it's isolated. How? Who will pay for its maintenance? Who will maintain for its upkeep? And sometimes I feel troubled, and when I speak about it, my prime minister has to tell me, you know, minister, calm down, calm down, calm down. You know, he has to calm me down because I am concerned. Because you want to organize your constituency, you want to ensure that things are making sense. The one in, in, in Odsa, they have already broken up and they have taken a toilet and the pump, new facilities. So we spent five million to build one in Odsa, 10 million dollars to build another in Bexar, community centers. And Mr. Speaker, you know, it's, it's in, in, upon reflection, if the dear Prime Minister give me 10 million dollars, now for Castries office, <laughs> You know, <laughs> I would ensure that I have a community center in more than 10 communities. In more than 10, adequate enough. Mr. Speaker, it is located next to a school. And upon accepting responsibility, I did ask the ministry responsible to ensure that the cement blast that took place on the school nearby in Otsa under the conditions of contract that they are responsible for, meant for painting the school over. And they did. But they have left the one in Bexon, in a state. And there's almost parking for 200 vehicles. 200 vehicles. And I ask, why would this prime, the former prime minister allow such to happen, but then this Today, I am speaking of, of, of you know, accountability and, 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 and all of the rules of good governance that would protect such abuse of resources. Somebody was having a field day. Somebody was having a good time. And the thing about it, in speaking with the community, they said they never asked for it. Nobody asked for it. No one asked for it. Loan. It was the World Bank. It was loan. loan. 
It was loan. But look at the ex-Prime Minister next to you. You understand? So I'm asking this question, and I'm, and I'm saying this in the context of, of what is important. <laughs> no, no. So then, I must conclude, Mr. Speaker, that this government, and I'm saying this briefly, this government is on the right, is on the right path in terms of how our Prime Minister, our Prime Minister is leading. How our Prime Minister is managing the affairs of the business of this country. And I also need to point out to the leader of the opposition, sometimes I sense as if he's suggesting that he's the authority on tourism. Whereas I know that our, the current Prime Minister and the member for Castries East, under his term as Minister of Tourism, did far much more. Mr. Speaker, I ask the question, why? And there is, a, there is a pattern that one must pay attention to. It's not so much the things we do when we're in power as we hear that important, you know. The things that we do not do is also important. We have no conflict of interest, so the former, our current ministers of tourism and the former prime minister do not own a, a, a hotel. So there's no conflict of interest. None. So when it comes for pushing the hotel business forward, they push it whoever comes forward and is capable and is able and is qualified, we do this. You understand? Mr. Speaker, also, in the context, in the context of arranging how these things are done, we have no interest. And I recall the statement made by the minister, the minister of, um, the, the member for, for Mikud South. When he asked the question in this house, he asked, how many of us ever owned the business? He asked that question. Have we ever been business owners? I think it was the last sitting of parliament. Almost to suggest our qualification being here rests on we being business owners. And I recall some years ago, a member of his side stood up and said, waved and said, I know how to take money and make money, make money. <laughs> Suggesting that the members on the other side are not business individuals. But what I've discovered in small island developing states, the people who are likely to impact your country more positively are persons who are prepared to create business, successful business of our citizens and not those who boast of being business persons themselves. And that is why in a short space of time, we have been able to achieve so much. Our passion is to ensure that our people are placed first at every juncture. Our hoteliers get an opportunity and sorry if you have interpreted that the, our posture towards tourism has been, we do not believe in it, which is far from the truth. We are not interested in becoming hoteliers, but being a hotelier does not make you a qualified minister of tourism. And therefore, we believe in our people who have the aspiration to become business individuals. We believe in the local persons who want to be in the, in, in, in the tourist business. But Mr. Speaker, I challenge the former Prime Minister with the form that he has put on today, that if he can allow under his watch such a wastage of resources, that we must now try to arrange to find all sorts of, all ways to try to make it make sense. I visited the place with the, the sporting people in the community, and we now need to agree as to what section they can be responsible for, how they can coexist. I must now ask the council to move in, to have a presence there, because I know as soon as this building is, uh, is handed over, it will be vandalized because of its location. I do not think that we have space for 200 vehicle parking. Bush will, all of the work done to create the parking, because it's not paved, Bush will take over that place, waste of resources. And I do not believe a community center needs central air conditioning system that's gonna cost $5,000 a month. That is not, that's not good business for a community center. 
So Mr. Speaker, if it was the indoor facility of Grosily, if you see the design of the indoor facility in Grosily, of course it can be used as an indoor facility. The seating arrange arrangement to see the players is there. But this one has a massive play area, but with no seating accommodation, you cannot even have an activity or a stage that you could even exploit it to do something. It's almost a free place to just go and recreate. And the cost of recreation becomes e extremely high, and you ask the question, who will pay for it? Mr. Speaker, there's a court, a covered court inside of the facility, but there's a court outside of the facility as well. That could have been fixed. So we have indoor, outdoor. And the one out there is not even being used much. Back so. So I'm saying to the minister, the minister, the former minister of finance, that he should consider that. And when he's speaking of what is happening on this side, I think he should reflect on some of the errors that he's made, some of what has happened under his watch, and not say that I'm happy. But repent of what he has done and acknowledge that we stand in better because we've seen what's done and we're trying to correct it. You need to repent of this because this is not good. You understand? You'll follow my lead? Okay, well, you'll be on the safe side, my brother. You understand? But you need to repent of this because this is not good. I do not think this is sustainable. And I think the, 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 if you follow what, has happened, what the Labour Party has put in place, Think of the vehicles for, for, for development. NIPRO, the National Lottery Authority, the James Bell Grave Fund, the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, the National Conservation Authority, the government of the Labour Party has seen it fit to put structures and a range in place to facilitate social development where central government is unable to reach. And therefore, these mechanisms has made it possible for the National Lottery Authority today to be the recipient of a guarantee to advance and to facilitate youth development by contributing to the well-keeping of our youth infrastructure and other youth interventions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.